All right, I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Jennifer Hewins. I'm the grad recruitment for, uh, coordinator at RISD. Um, welcome to our 2022 grad open house. I'm sure many of you have been to some of our other sessions. I'm probably getting sick of seeing my face at these, but um, I apologize. Uh, today, this session will be focusing on our liberal arts program, the MA in Nature, Culture, Sustainability Studies. Uh, with me today, I have the graduate program a director and a current student of the program. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Sean. Amazing. Thank you so much, Jen. Um, it's wonderful to, uh, to be here with y'all um, today. My name is Sean nesserod Moncada. My pronouns are he, him, and um, I am joined by Sierra Gideon, uh, who is a second year uh, student currently in the Nature Culture Sustainability Studies Program, or NCSS, as we like to abbreviate it here at RISD. Um, I'll let Sierra introduce uh, herself uh, momentarily, or at least right now, <laughs> before, before I kind of get into the details. Yeah, thanks, Sean. So hi, I'm Sierra. I'm a second year student in the Nature Culture Sustainability Studies MA program. I'm currently in my thesis semester, working on a thesis on history and memories of copper extraction in Butte, Montana. Thank you, Sarah. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen because I have a presentation with many images for y'all. Um, and so I'd like to um, begin before I get into the details of graduate study at RISD and particularly in the liberal arts. Um, I want to acknowledge that the Rhode Island School of Design is located on the occupied ancestral and contemporary territory of the Narragansett, Wampanoag, and the Nipmuc nations. And RISD and, is located, and, and both Sierra and I are joining you, from land that was formed by ancient geologic shifts and retreating glaciers that left unique coastal and marine ecologies, sustaining generations of indigenous peoples over more than 10,000 years and the continued presence and stewardship of the land by these peoples predates the colonial settlement and foundation of the United States. And so RISD is located on what is today uh, known as College Hill. And this is land that was deeded by Sachem's Canonicus and the Antonimo in 1638 and seized in the aftermath of Medicum's rebellion in 1676. And it's an institution and region that have been upheld by structures of violence against black and indigenous communities including chattel slavery. And I begin with this important context and this land acknowledgement because in NCSS in particular, we want to be very attuned to our own location and how we engage not just with histories um, of the earth, but also our contemporary reality and how we relate to nature, to culture, to one another, and look to uh, achieve and realize and work towards more sustainable and just and equitable futures. And so uh, before getting into the details of the program, I want to give a brief overview of graduate study in general at RISD. Um, and so I will be speaking uh, to the Masters of Arts, the MA in Nature, Culture, Sustainability Studies. And um, but first, I want to talk about RISD more broadly, because whatever you're here you know, to learn about, RISD will challenge you to ask questions that matter to help connect your practice, your research, two issues um, of significance um, of the world of nature at large. So as a bit of background, RISD was founded in 1877 by a remarkable group of women. And it has a very uh, kind of um, uh, famous focus on craftsmanship and technique as well as research. And we're known for innovation and the way that we reframe the role of art and design in the world, but we also pursue rigorous academic scholarship in the liberal arts and uh, engage in public facing research that can reevaluate our own understanding of nature, ecology, and society. And so for example, I've moved back a little bit, but you can see um, this was a recent event uh, called Imagine 2200. That was a collaboration between the NCSS program and GRIST, um, which you may be uh, familiar with, grist.org, um, to imagine new futures and just futures for future ancestors. So RISD at a glance, um, as a whole, as a kind of community, consists of approximately 500 graduate students and 2,000 undergraduates. So it's a small but mighty cohort at large throughout the departments. And our students come from uh, not just the United States, but around the world with a growing and diverse community. 
about 38% of our student population um, consists of students of color, um, BIPOC, and 36% are international students representing approximately 69 countries. In terms of process and what we do here at RISD, um, while our students and alumni have distinct paths, including in the liberal arts, we all have one thing in common, which is asking questions. Each department and program uh, at RISD has its own unique spaces, its own facilities, and its own opportunities um, for making. And so this, what we're seeing here, is called college building. It's the building I'm in, uh, as, as well as Sierra, right now. Um, if you can see, I'm, I'm in one of the uh, one of these many windows that you can see. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but um, this is where NCSS and liberal arts is really, really kind of located. Um, but in addition to this particular space, we have a bunch of facilities on campus um, across the disciplines that help elevate research um, in particular. Um, probably the most relevant and, and one of the most exciting is known as the Nature Lab, uh, which offers unmediated access to natural history specimens and it fosters creative inquiry into biodesign, ecology, and the climate crisis as well. And so there are um, high-end microscopes, there are um, high-speed cameras, there are a bunch of imaging systems that give us access to both living and non-living specimens at multiple scales um, to examine the kind of intersection between scientific study, the humanities, and the social sciences, which is really at the heart of NCSS. And you can see another image here um, uh, of the, of, at work in the Nature Lab. Um, RISD is, by the way, the only art and design school in the country to receive funding through the National Science Foundation, um, which is a, a major award that has enabled us to house a biodesign makerspace. We also have the Fleet Library, which is um, historically a bank building that has been reimagined in downtown Providence and offers access to a very large collection of books on art, design, architecture, um, as you might expect at RISD, but we also have a very, uh, a very robust and growing NCSS collection that consists of fiction, of journals, of uh, nonfiction in, in a variety of disciplines. Um, but there's also a picture collection and a materials resource center, um, as well as a special collections library that includes over 20,000 um, rare and important printed books, periodicals, artist books, um, that date all the way back to the 14th century um, to the present. Um, in the Fleet Library, uh, in the same building, there's also the Center for Arts and Language, which will provide tutoring and English language support, whether you're working on a paper, a master's thesis, a cover letter, a grant proposal, um, or any other project that's at the intersection of arts, language, research, and communication. We also have the RISD Museum, uh, which provides exhibitions, events, internships, and assistantships um, that will give uh, you as students something that isn't really found in many other institutions, which is an opportunity to engage with a renowned art collection for research practices, for curatorial experience, for activist interventions, and broader engagement in the community. This is an image of the Cogler Lab, which hosts a collection of research objects for investigating the significance of color as a concept and a material across art and design. Um, it's relevant historically, scientifically, and culturally. And this is CoWorks, which is a new interdisciplinary space that has industrial sewing machines, small scale CNC routers and mills, and 3D printers, just to name a few of the, uh, the facilities on hand. Uh, CoWorks is specifically geared to facilitate cross-disciplinary research and curriculum development throughout all um, departments. And of course, no overview of RISD resources is complete without talking about Brown University, which is just up the, up the hill, as we like to put it. And Brown is our neighbor right here in Providence. And as students, you can cross-register for classes to support your studies and your research here at RISD. And we do have access uh, and provide access to the extensive libraries and facilities at Brown. That's a very large overview of some of the facilities on campus. I don't know if you would like to um, add anything, Sierra, or just experience um, with some of the facilities that are on hand here at RISD. Sure, yeah. So it really depends um, what resources will be of interest based on your own interests at RISD. I tended to use the Fleet Library quite a lot, as well as the Rockefeller Library up at Brown. 
Um, I do want to say um, about the resources at Brown, it is totally possible to cross register for classes, but there is a process where you have to fill out forms, be consistent with professors uh, expressing your interest, um, it was possible for one person in my cohort to get into a class at Brown. So definitely that is an option, but it can be a bit of a process for sure. Yes, so plan early um, and pay attention to the deadlines. Brown and RISD are on slightly different timescales in terms of our semesters and just kind of scheduling is um, absolutely uh, possible. But as Sierra put it, um, it does require some coordination and that's, that's where I and um, the liberal arts kind of administration come into play to kind of help help that be possible. I want to talk a little bit about the culture of RISD, um, the kind of ethos, because um, our graduate uh, communities, as well as undergraduate, converge in a green but urban space. Um, we have students that move from class to class. Um, at RISD, you will occasionally see pop-up installations and kind of lectures and site-specific kind of work, um, as well as a regular Exciting being gallery shows and opening receptions that happen throughout the year. Um, graduate students um, in the studio um, department, so not necessarily in NCSS, but they frequently share their work in exhibitions with the larger RISD community. Um, but there are opportunities for moments of casual cross-disciplinary conversation and critique. And so a lot of what being a grad student at RISD is, um, it's being able to cultivate the experience that you want, to advocate for what you want. Um, students, for example, lead several grad exchanges that connect students across all departments to create a dialogue about the work that they're making or the conversations that they're having or the research that they're doing. The grad representatives serve as a liaison between the graduate student body and the RISD administration. And we have one student in particular who is working with um, a kind of collaborator in the architecture and design division in a sustainability assistantship to foster and cultivate these, um, these conversations beyond RISD and beyond liberal arts with the broader kind of RISD community, not just students, but also faculty and staff. And so, as I mentioned earlier, students are active in shaping the future that they want to see at RISD and beyond. Most recently, this RISD uh, anti-racist coalition helped shape the school's latest actions and commitments related to social equity and inclusion, which is a top priority both for the program and the institution at large. RISD has hired 10 full-time faculty of color, fully funded by an anonymous donor that specialize particularly in um, art and design with respect to race and ethnicity, not just in the US, but globally. And they have helped expand the curriculum and our own horizons to include coursework in social equity among other in, amongst other in initiatives, excuse me. Um, and uh, they uh, and a good uh, a number of them are represented within liberal arts as well and have really begun to, to shape the program in really, really exciting new ways. And so attending or attending to our present day and our present moment, um, I want to take a moment and uh, and kind of uh, acknowledge that we continue to monitor uh, the development uh, of COVID-19 and to safeguard the health and well-being of the RISD community through testing, physical distancing protocols, and other campus-wide efforts. There's a lot of Zoom, for example, that still happens, as you can see right here with this webinar, which uh, provides new opportunities to connect with one another, but also beyond the boundaries, you know, physical or otherwise, of RISD itself. So as you can see, the campus has a community in a sense of being very physically cohesive, but a big part of what makes it unique is actually the city of Providence itself which is known for its excellence in art and education and research, um, as you see here. Providence is located, for uh, those of you who may not have visited, it's between Boston and New York City, and it's kind of the best of both worlds because it's very different from its neighbors. It's very small, it's urban, it's easy to walk, to, to work, to get around, and it has a very unique creative culture, not just in Providence, but we're also surrounded by nature. Um, there are 40 miles of shoreline and beaches. We are indeed the ocean state here in Rhode Island. And what you're seeing here is a photograph of Tillingest Farm, which is a beach owned by RISD, located 15 minutes away by car from campus. So if a family member or a partner will be moving with you to Providence, there are many professional options for them to consider. Um, Hasbro and CVS are headquartered here. There are many surrounding schools and a thriving economy of great restaurants, independent shops, nonprofits. And there is a commuter rail line that connects us to Boston. 
And so a number of our students and faculty actually do commute from Boston and other cities. So that's my big overview of RISD and grad study and provenance. But what about NCSS? What makes us so interesting and different and unique? And so, as I mentioned, I'm the, I'm the graduate program director or the GPD of NCSS, um, but I'm also associate professor for theory and history of art and design here in liberal arts. I teach across the undergraduate and grad curriculum, and I particularly lead courses on Latin American and Latinx art and visual cultures, as well as petrocultures, new materialisms, and decolonization. As GPD, I will be the main point of contact for the program, and I will be able to connect you to faculty and students within NCSS their programs. NCSS is one of two new MA programs in the Division of Liberal Arts, along with its sibling program, Global Arts and Cultures. What's unique about NCSS is that it's not housed in any single department, but it is conceived as an interdisciplinary collaboration between all four liberal arts departments, theory and history of art and design, literary arts and studies, history, philosophy, and social sciences, and teaching and learning in art and design. Our faculty, who you see represented here with various projects and photographs, has a broad expertise in a variety of disciplines from art history to eco-criticism, anthropology to political science, architecture to philosophy. And as an interdisciplinary program, NCSS introduces students to a broad range of theories and epistemologies which challenge us to rethink our relationship to the earth, to our natural and built environments and to one another. And so the research that we undertake allows us to address some of these most pressing ecological, climatological and geological issues of our time. We're housed in college building, as I mentioned earlier, and college building was constructed in 1936. It's located adjacent to the RISD Museum on, on Main Street and it's the heart of liberal arts. Um, on the right, you'll see an image of the old library, as it was known, um, the original library on campus before it's currently a, a classroom and presentation space. And on the top right is the liberal arts grad lounge, which is um, the heart of um, not just a, a space for you to, to work, but also to converse. And there are events that occur there um, every, every month or so um, for faculty and students to dialogue with one another. But as I um, probably implied earlier, NCSS is not just limited to college building. And I think, I don't know if the slide is loaded. There we go. Um, but in course seminars, you'll take field trips to local organizations, um, to local institutions, both on campus and beyond. And these are some images from field trips that were taken by the current cohort of NCSS graduate students, including Sierra, um, to Save the Bay Foundation, to the Nature Lab, um, and to various other kinds of spots on campus. Um, Sierra, I don't know if you would like to just kind of very briefly reflect on the experience of kind of the first semester at NC, uh, with NCSS and some of these field trips that we might have taken um, on campus. This feels like so long ago, a year ago now, but um, if you could speak to that, that would be wonderful, please. Yeah, sure. So it was in Sean's class, uh, re research issues that we were able to go to the nature lab as well as the special collections of the Providence Public Library and Save the Bay, where we spoke with some water conservationists there. Uh, yeah, it was great to be able to get out of the classroom a bit. I think that's one of the things that's also becoming a lot more common as we're kind of easing out of COVID to start doing a bit more outside of the classroom and outside of the virtual space. And I think that's really important. Yeah, it's been a great time of reconnection. And I think building those, those new kind of interactions. Um, and as you can see here, this was uh, in, the, in the top photo, this is the current cohort analyzing beetle specimens in the nature lab, which was a cool kind of, um, it was a good change, I think for me as well, um, beyond kind of just like reading and writing, which we do a lot of in that CSS. So different forms of thinking and different ways of acquiring knowledge. In NCSS, we um, also invite a large number of scholarly speakers each year. These are some examples from the past academic year um, in which uh, we had Lauren Spears, Sunita Larain, um, and Nick Estes, um, who all came to speak uh, publicly in conjunction with the NCSS program um, about subjects ranging to environmental futures, to indigenous knowledge, knowledges and ecologies, um, and, and just future and, and sustainability. Um, in the broadest possible sense. 
Um, I want to speak a little bit about alumni. Um, our, our students uh, who graduate from NCSS, they pursue uh, engaged study in all sorts of forms that informs professional and scholarly pursuits. Um, and they have undertaken a variety of paths. Um, for example, um, Rubaya, who we, who we see here, um, is currently a doctoral candidate in the School of Engineering in British Columbia. But um, Alice Santoro, for example, um, is an artist who returned to the rural Southwest to continue exploring practices and frameworks cultivate, cultivating imagination and reason in tandem. Um, how can art change the world? Um, and she's doing some really interesting things. But also Dongri Tang um, is a newly admitted PhD student in the Learning Sciences and Human Development Program at Washington University where she's pursuing um, activity uh, and studies on childhood outdoor learning environment and health. Um, and so just from this kind of these, these three um, examples, NCSS will allow you to pursue a number of uh, uh, scholarly and professional pursuits, whether that be continuing doctoral education, working in the public sector, in the nonprofit sector, um, and more, it really is what you um, make of it which brings me to our current cohort of graduating students. Um, Pumi Dalvis, uh, Dylan Foster, Sierra Gideon, who is here right here, uh, Victor Rivera Diaz, and Lee Singhi. And these are five, um, I'm biased, but they are extraordinary students who are pursuing really interesting work ranging from uh, extractive economies and their afterlives to green space, to fashion design and the ethics of slow fashion, to food systems, to um, racial justice in the urban environment um, in the U.S. Midwest. And so again, a range of, of disciplinary and uh, scholarly inquiry um, that y'all are um, taking in really, really exciting new directions. So I want to talk a little bit about the program itself and its history, its vision, its structure, and what your life um, in NCSS will actually look like. And I'll tell us, I'll start a little bit about how the program evolved and the history of the program over the past couple of years, because NCSS is only four years old. And as I mentioned earlier, it's one of two sibling programs in MA, uh, in the Master of Arts program in liberal arts. The other one um, that you see represented by this graphic on the left is called Global Arts and Cultures, or GAC. So whereas GAC invites an inquiry into pressing contemporary issues at the intersection of globalization and cultural production, NCSS is a little bit different because we concentrate on the rapidly evolving fields of interdisciplinary environmental studies. Yet despite this difference of focus, both of the programs, GAC and NCSS, are united by a shared approach to scholarship and research. And so first and foremost, I want to emphasize that an MA is not an MFA, nor is it a BA. Most graduate students at RISD are pursuing a Master of Fine Arts or a Master of Architecture. They're in the studio making and designing, and they have a concentration in these areas. NCSS graduates, however, pursue a Master of Arts, and so this is grounded in academic theory and research. In your course seminars and in your electives, you'll prioritize reading and writing and scholarly inquiry to an extent that is much more rigorous and much more self-motivated than you might have done in undergraduate studies. NCSS really encourages independent curiosity on the part of its students and a desire to undertake sustained research in a given area of inquiry. We also firmly believe that research is at heart an ethical pursuit. The majority of your academic work is going to take the form of written papers, but we also invite students to define research as something that has a tangible impact beyond the four walls of the classroom or the boundaries of the RISD campus. That could take the form of an academic panel, or published writing or a conference presentation or even a food stall that's meant to feed the community and foster community. We invite you to see your scholarly study, to see your scholarly studies as embedded within a larger network of thinkers, makers, and doers who can educate, inspire, and advocate for better and more equitable futures. And above all, we seek new ways of knowing that are not limited by disciplinary boundaries or imaginative barriers. As we're studying our relationship with the natural environment, our urban and suburban landscapes, extractive economies, the Anthropocene, to name just a few examples, as students and faculty alike, we, we really like to move out of our comfort zones and to challenge each other, to expand our horizons of what's possible, not just in research practice, but also in our approach to addressing the urgent issues of climate change, of food insecurity, 
resource exploitation, environmental refugee crises, urban development, you name it. Um, and it's really an opportunity to, to stretch our boundaries um, of what is possible and how we know what we know. Which kind of gets me into our values because our program really hopes to empower you know, all of you as thinkers and researchers as ethical and critical citizens of the world who can take what you learn from the program and use that as a tool to move the dial in the world. Oops, excuse me. Um, and so to that end, you know, we, we seek the pursuit of ethical engaged research um, to, to really um, encourage you to engage with these pressing issues um, related to ecology, to society, to politics um, in our rapidly changing world. Um, and thinking about how reading and researching across the disciplines and in the humanities and social sciences really allows for a kind of more robust and productive conversation. Embrace, embracing interdisciplinary inquiry and innovative methods will allow scholarship to, pers to push beyond the epistemological boundaries into positive and exciting new ways. And focused independently driven scholarship pushes students to take ownership of knowledge production and to propose new ways of knowing. And so above all, research has to advance principles of social equity and inclusion, of environmental justice and equal access to resources, opportunities, and knowledge. These are the values that we have at NCSS and that we encourage you to foster and to prioritize in your research as you undertake your scholarship and your studies towards the thesis. And of course, I've mentioned the thesis, so this is a really good opportunity to talk about the curriculum itself. We are a fully accredited 39 credit MA, which spans one and a half years. At RISD, all students enroll in classes um, in NCSS uh, and otherwise in the fall and spring semesters. But what's unique about RISD um, across the board is that we have a five week intensive winter session semester every year. Um, and that's the time to get outside the NCSS for cross disciplinary learning. So we have one and a half years for NCSS and this is what those one and a half years look like. Um, if you visit the website, you'll see a full outline of the courses that you'll, take, that you'll be taking, including the course descriptions, but I'll lay it out here as well. And so you can see um, you take 12 credits each um, fall and spring semester and winter session is a particular elective um, for, uh, three, uh, for three credits. Um, and so um, I, I, want to, I, I want to kind of get into the details of what this curriculum actually looks like. So core seminars, as you may have seen, we have 12 credits worth um, of core seminars during your time. Um, at, uh, at NCSS and RISD, and they're divided between theory and practice. So in the fall semester, you'll take Theories of Nature Culture, which is a seminar introducing you to some of the core theoretical te texts and concepts of the degree program. It's really good foundation in terms of the vocabulary and concepts that we're dealing with. There's also Inventive Political Ecologies, which addresses a set of case studies from around the world that um, basically take the theories of nature culture and see how they operate in practice um, across nations and cultures with a real emphasis on difference and diversity. In the first year, um, Sierra mentioned the research issue seminar that I lead, and you will also be taking this in which you will explore your own research habits, consider how they might be more, more suitable for the kinds of projects to pursue, and explore the viability of innovative and interdisciplinary approaches. This is a seminar that's really pitched equally between theory and practice, and it leads into the final of the core seminars, which is the prospectus seminar in the spring semester of the first year. In the prospectus seminar, you will take the tools and the theories learned thus far of theory and practice um, and apply it to the creation of a thesis prospectus or a proposal. And that takes the form of, uh, or will be the basis of thesis research in the second year. One quarter um, or over one quarter of the degree also consists of elective courses, either in NCSS or other programs. Here you'll see some examples of uh, uh, electives that have been offered within NCSS itself by diverse faculty in multiple fields. Um, these include designing post-carbon futures, environment and power in East Asia, foodways and sustainable food systems, and a seminar on petrocultures around the globe. Students are also encouraged to take classes in uh, global arts and cultures and even beyond 
liberal arts, and NCSS students have taken courses in textiles, graphic design, photography, to name a few examples. Um, and some of these electives might be selected from graduate commons courses, which are open to all grad students um, across the college. And these are opportunities to explore the unexpected, to get out of your comfort zone and broaden your own horizons in preparation for the thesis. Um, Sierra, I don't know if you'd like to speak to um, some of the electives that you've been able to take during your time at the NCSS program to kind of give us a, a sense of what that might look like for an individual student path. Yeah, so for me, I was able to take uh, two classes in the photography department, because that's one of my many interests that I was able to bring together here. Um, I took one photography class that was specifically geared at alternative photo practices, and I ended up making my own seed paper to write poetry on. So that was really fun. One thing I like about RISD is that there are opportunities for you know projects you could never even fathom before coming in here. Another class was for digital photography. So sort of some basics, learning how to set the aperture, all that. So some people in my cohort took graphic design classes, a couple people took GIS classes, kind of all over the place. But I was also able to take one grad commons class with uh, two professors in the Global Arts and Cultures program. So there really are a lot of options and you can tailor those electives to your own interests. Thank you. Um, and it gives, and, and I think that I, 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 I ask you in particular, because I think you have a really cool kind of trajectory within NCSS that allows you to draw together kind of all of these different strands of making, of doing, um, especially of thinking and kind of conceptualizing um, the world, um, which can really inform the thesis itself. And it's, it's been, um, you know, from my vantage point, really rewarding just kind of to see how that's all, you know, moving into the thesis, which is the culminating um, kind of project for, for NCSS. The master's thesis is a substantive, uh, oh, excuse me, substantive research-based paper um, that will make an original intervention um, to knowledge uh, production. You're seeing here some examples um, from last year's cohort, both in global arts and cultures and NCSS of theses um, that have been uh, completed for both programs. And in the thesis, you'll produce original scholarship of publishable quality, which will make a significant contribution to your field or fields um, to expand the knowledge base of the disciplines that you will engage. During your thesis semester, which is the fall of the second year, which Sierra is currently in the midst of, um, students work independently, but with the guidance of a thesis advisor. And the thesis advisor is a dedicated faculty member in liberal arts who will supervise your progress um, they'll provide critical feedback, they'll meet regularly, and they'll really push your thinking in really productive new directions. And the advisor chairs a thesis committee of faculty members who assist with the development and the completion of the thesis. Um, just kind of um, of note, I will mention that I am on the, um, on the committee for Sierra's thesis, um, and so I can say with, with utmost authority um, that it's a stellar thesis, and I'm really excited for it. Um, so that's just kind of my little like, woo. Uh, but um, uh, examples of, of past NCSS theses um, that you'll see here um, by uh, the graduating cohort um, where uh, we have uh, Carmen Moreno uh, created a work called Earth Body in which they're exploring the connections between deco decolonizing thinking and mushroom structures, you know, mycelia. Um, we have Ala Messina by Margaret Broughton, um, which really, um, looked at Madagascar and ritual kind of belief and uh, new ontologies of the, in, of the tangible and intangible of sacred forests. Um, we have Casey Merkel in the center who did work on the Blackstone watershed um, and water systems and the kind of imaginative frameworks and the real material frameworks of them um, here, right here in Providence. And on the right is uh, the cover of uh, Michelle Dixon's thesis on fashion and grace which merged theology um, with the fashion crisis in really interesting kind of new um, conversations. And this thesis work has traditionally gone on display at our annual grad thesis show in the spring semester. And it's featured online. You can visit the website yourself and see examples of student work. And final thesis work has also traditionally gone on display in the annual thesis show in the spring. Um, and so, so uh, we'll, we'll be represented in the spring uh, NCSS as well as GAC with a kind of visual presentation. It's an interesting kind of prospect because it is a written thesis and you're not exactly making 
um, kind of artistic material, but there is a kind of representation in the in the physical world as well as um, even more so in the digital world. So in your classes and in your thesis work, you can expect dynamic exchange as your research will be pushed further through seminar conversations with your peers and NCSS as well as other programs, through regular feedback with your professors, with your advisor. Um, and so while you know, RISD is definitely well known for its studio culture, kind of the critique in the studio, this translates really well to liberal arts because we, we really prioritize rigorous debate, debate and feedback on your written work, on your oral presentations, both public and in the classroom, and just in day-to-day -day conversation. And so I wanna talk a little bit beyond the studio and classroom about opportunities to further your research and to receive funding in the process. One of these is through assistantships, which are awarded on an individual basis after the fall semester begins of your first year. Um, you're seeing here uh, the kind of photograph that we took after the Imagine 2200 Climate Fiction panel with Chris, and uh, the student all the way on the left is Rini Singhi, who is the programming assistant uh, for NCSS, who really made this um, happen. Uh, Sierra has an assistantship for recruitment and uh, prospective student outreach. And so assistantships in NCSS really allow students to take ownership of the program and really help, you know, kind of make it run on a day-to-day -day level um, in ways that can really steer the program to what you prioritize, what you need, and what you hope to see it be in the future. Um, they uh, provide opportunities to engage with the kind of ongoing development. Um, and this can also involve work in the NCSS collection in the library to have outreach beyond NCSS throughout the institution. And I'll be working with you in finding the right fit for an assistantship and looking at what opportunities might be best aligned with your talents, your goals, as well as your needs. Um, in addition to campus-wide events, um, like the Social Equity and Inclusion Lecture Series, whom you see uh, here at RISD, will also invite artists, scholars, and others to give public talks and workshops throughout the year. Um, we see here the award-winning cultural critic Hilton Alls, and I mentioned earlier the, um, the speakers who have come, particularly in conjunction with NCSS itself. And in addition to department-funded assistantships, there are uh, many ec external research opportunities facilitated by RISD. Um, these include the Graduate Commons Grants, which is an annual grant pro program to support open-ended creative explorations and goal-oriented projects. Uh, you can propose your own project for a Commons Grant, and if it is funded, um, you can use it to facilitate your work. Um, there's also the RISD Hyundai Research um, Collaboration, um, which began in the spring of this year, uh, consisting of 37 students led by four faculty throughout RISD to consider the ethical considerations of the future of AI and what it might mean. Um, that has since evolved into a summer kind of program um, that was uh, coordinated with the Nature Lab that I mentioned earlier. And one of our students um, has been, uh, has participated in this initiative over the summer um, alongside for students with other, uh, with 12 other RISD departments ranging from architecture to ceramics to glass to graphic design to printmaking to global arts and cultures. And NCSS is right there in the mix. And so the student Dylan Foster has um, contributed to the, to the creation of this exhibition that's on right now um, called Sustainable Futures Co-Creating with Nature. There are also under other, fun, other funded opportunities to support research. Um, we're seeing a photo of Gavin Zeitz, who is a student in landscape architecture, who has received the Maharam STEAM Fellowship to support a summer internship for RISD students and alumni. Uh, this program supports the opportunity to affect real change in sustainability and social justice um, through internships with local and global organizations and communities. And so thinking about internships, um, as well as careers, we have a careers office at RISD who will help you receive support to explore such opportunity and your creative direction, either through future internships, through jobs, or doctoral study. Um, you're seeing here uh, a screenshot <laughs> of a Zoom, a, a hybrid meeting uh, and panel uh, featuring our professors, uh, Naima Petini and Professor Sage Gerson, um, who are both recent uh, additions very welcome additions to liberal arts in RISD um, on a panel about pursuing the PhD that was organized by our students in conjunction with um, careers. And so this gets me to faculty um, with our core liberal arts faculty. And we represent an array of expertise and a dedication to empowering our students to have lasting impact on 
personal growth and scholarly growth and professional growth. And this is a, a grid of just some of uh, the many, many professors in liberal arts. But among them, uh, the, there, there are uh, several of us whom you see highlighted here that are particularly affiliated with NCSS. And just looking at this screen, you can see professors who specialize in everything from indigenous uh, kind of ecologies and knowledge production to uh, political, uh, political economy, to art history, um, to eco-criticism and, and literary kind of production. Um, Sierra, I don't want to put you on the spot, but could you speak a little bit to kind of your experience working with uh, this kind of diversity of faculty across your uh, across your studies, both within the classroom and, and beyond the classroom, please? Yeah, I was able to work with a few of our different professors here, specifically Nicole Marola in the top left, uh, Namita Daria for Inventive Political Ecologies, then with you for Research Issues Seminar, um, a few of the GAC professors as well. So really there is a lot of interaction with both NCSS and GAC professors throughout the three different divisions within liberal arts. It's been great to have professors from all over the world with a variety of interests. So there's really just the chance to connect with a lot of different professors. Thank you. I didn't, I didn't mean that to sound like, just like please say good things about the professors at RISD. But I think we really do prioritize within liberal arts and because this is such an interdisciplinary program, um, those kinds of conversations where we might be using the same words, but in radically different ways, which is a really nice way to kind of shake us out of our comfort zone. We're all, you know, as I, as I like to say, especially in the liberal arts, we're all huge nerds here. We just like to nerd out and have those kinds of conversations. And so, you know, as, as we're, you know, in, in this webinar and kind of thinking about future nerds that we can recruit. Um, I wanna talk about you know, how we build a cohort here in NCSS because we really want people who are intent on making a difference in the world in ways you know, both big and small through NCSS and through this idea and this reality of, of research in the 21st century. NCSS is really ideal for driven and inquisitive students um, who might have backgrounds in the liberal arts um, or in art and design fields. We're looking for students um, who have a very strong interest in critical socio-ecological issues and who are really interested in pursuing interdisciplinary research, um, really kind of pushing the boundaries of what research can look like. We want someone who um, might, you know, you might have some, you might be someone, excuse me, with a professional background in related fields, which is not required, but definitely welcome in terms of shaping your own kind of sensibility and your outlook. But regardless of your own professional or scholarly or educational background, above all, we want someone who's passionate about issues of equity, of justice, of environmental sustainability. And so let's talk about how you apply, right? How do you get to NCSS? So first you'll need to fill out an application, um, but also submit a statement of purpose. Um, at liberal arts, um, both for NCSS as well as GAC, we don't require a studio, uh, excuse me, not a studio, uh, a portfolio of studio work, um, but rather we really emphasize a writing sample that will um, kind of tell us, uh, you know, what, what uh, your kind of angle is. Um, we also uh, ask for three letters of recommendation, as well as academic transcripts, as well as language test scores, if uh, applicable. So to get into some more detail for the statement of purpose, it will introduce yourself as a thinker, as a scholar, as a writer. Um, you should address in detail your intellectual interests as well as your proposed topics of grad study. And it should really reflect your understanding about the contours and the demands of graduate study in NCSS and liberal arts at RISD. And again, I must emphasize that we are an MA program rather than an MFA program. The writing sample, as I mentioned earlier, it should be a piece of writing that represents your strongest critical slash analytical writing on a topic clearly related to NCSS. Um, it could be a seminar paper from your undergraduate work. It could be even a grant proposal. It could be independent research that you've conducted on your own. But if it's excerpted from a larger work, please you know, do indicate that and how it fits into that. So I know I've sent a ton of information your way, um, as well as uh, so has Sierra. 
but hopefully we've provided you with um, plenty to really kind of prompt some questions and continue discussion. I've um, listed some contact info here. Uh, you can go to the main website accessible through liberalartsmasters.risd.edu. My email is s-n-e-s-s-e-l-r at risd.edu, and I'm happy to answer any questions, um, as well as admissions at risd.edu and graduatestudy.risd.edu more broadly. But I'd also be remiss if I didn't um, also include the excellent and robust Instagram at NCSS RISD that Sierra is managing excellently um, and can provide you a little bit more um, behind the scenes kind of detail of just the general vibe of NCSS. And so with that, I'm very happy, you know, in our last uh, kind of 10 minutes or so uh, to open it up to Q&A uh, either for myself, for Sierra or for Jen, um, and we can answer any questions that you might have. Um, so please, please ask away. Feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A se uh, section of Zoom, or if you want to um, raise your hand, I can give you the ability to, to um, speak and you can ask your question yourself. So feel free to do either. Um, there is no wrong question. Um, all questions are valid, so feel free to ask them away. This is the time when we have the faculty here and the students, Sierra. Well, maybe while we're waiting for uh, questions to kind of come in, um, I don't know, Sierra, if you could kind of maybe just give a bit, I, I, I feel very unfair because I kind of put you on the spot several times while I was speaking, but if you could, just, if there's anything that I haven't mentioned that you'd like to really kind of emphasize about the program and about your experience, um, this might be a nice opportunity for you to just kind of shed light um, in maybe a less prescribed <laughs> kind of way. Sure, yeah, I'll go ahead and say that this program and the curriculum has been very interdisciplinary. So it's been a way to bring in a lot of my interests together as it has been interdisciplinary in a slightly different way for everyone else in my cohort. That interdisciplinarity -ness looks different for everyone based on what we do. Um, the 1.5 year program goes very fast. I can't believe I'm in my second year already, almost done with the thesis. So it, it is a pretty rapid progression going through that core curriculum. Um, everything's designed around the thesis, but I want to emphasize that there is still time and space to explore different interests outside of that. Like in my cohort, uh, Rini has had the chance to work on a fantastic publication called Duke. Um, I've been able to travel a bit and do research in a different state. Um, someone else in my cohort, Dylan, has worked with the RISD Hyundai collaboration. Um, so there's been a lot of space to focus on things outside of the thesis. Thank you, Sarah. I think that's a that's a really nice kind of holistic uh, kind of uh, summary of the of the experience. And I, I, to what you were saying, there are um, definitely multiple pathways, and I'm I'm glad that you brought in some of the work that you know you and Rini are doing that are in conjunction with NCSS, but also kind of push you know branching out in different directions. Um, this is kind of my elegant segue to answering um, one of the questions that uh, dropped in the chat uh, from Matt. It's great to meet you, Matt, um, about a student studying food systems. And that is really actually um, regarding organic food and design. That's definitely something that is in the mix with the program. Um, there are no prescribed disciplines per se within the program, but it really changes depending on the incoming cohort. And so, for example, in this cohort, um, we have students who, you know, one student, for example, who is very interested in food systems. And one of our faculty members, Jonathan Highfield in literary arts and studies specializes in this very subject. Um, and so that has been a, a, a kind of, it's really um, impacted the curriculum that we're able to offer as we know that, oh, okay, there's someone in the cohort that's really interested in X, Y, and Z. Let's prioritize that as we're designing these, um, these seminars, um, as well as finding you know, electives that might resonate um, with those kinds of courses of study. Um, with results of some of, with respect to some of the kind of maybe more um, kind of nuts and bolts um, factors of admissions, we have two um, uh, two questions. One is from Sarah uh, about insight as to who is involved in the application review process, and so that is um, really uh, the committee of NCSS faculty um, who will be assessing your application. And so what we're looking for is a good kind of fit. 
are you thinking critically about these issues, right? Are you communicating? The, the most important thing in the application is that you communicate your passion for these subjects and your passion in terms of not just um, what you have done, but also where you want to go, right? What do you, wh where do you want to be at the end of your year and a half of the program? And so the faculty, you know, from multiple disciplines, um, we really um, are, are quite well distributed throughout liberal arts. We're all looking at the application review and not necessarily like I'm not necessarily looking for an art historian to kind of fill a quota, but I'm looking for more of that kind of spirit of inquiry and engaged curiosity. Um, on that uh, note, uh, Lauren has asked about letters of recommendation. And for letters of recommendation, we would really encourage people who know you as a scholar and as a thinker. This could be um, one of your former professors or your current professors if you're still an undergrad. This could be an employer uh, or a colleague or a boss. Um, I would maybe discourage family members, but I think that for letters of recommendation, you want someone who can really speak to your strengths. Um, I will say as someone who has written letters of recommendation, ask them early and give them plenty of time, especially at the end of the year, because we're all very busy as professors and as people um, during the holidays. But um, you want someone who can really speak to your strengths and who can really, um, you know, be a cheerleader for you and give a give an insight into your work and your own kind of sense of, of research and, and um, your, the way that you approach these issues. And we have a question from Lena about research methods that students use in the program. So with respect to research methods, we have a whole variety just represented by the theses that are currently in progress and the ones that have already happened. Um, I don't know, Sierra, would you be able to, to speak a little bit about your own research methods that you've been able to kind of um, engage with? Because I know your thesis is doing quite interesting work between and across disciplines. Yeah, so a lot of the research methods that I use for my thesis are qualitative. Um, I look at meaning in text, visual content. So a lot of that comes down to close analysis of archives, contemporary photographs. Um, I'm studying memories and histories of copper extraction. So I'm looking at what interpretive signs say um, and how they construct a narrative that aligns with a state or corporate view of that copper mining history. So for me, it has been primarily qualitative, um, yeah, content analysis, rhetorical analysis. I've analyzed some government documents as well, so kind of all over the place, but other people in my cohort have done some similar things with environmental aesthetics, analysis of photography. Um, yeah, other people using some more visual methods. Uh, yeah, we're kind of all over the place with our methods. That's a good way of putting it all over the place. <laughs> um, and what we really try to do, um, especially in the fall semester research course, is to equip you with a good kind of like, a, 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 I like to think of it as like a bag of tricks, like a deep kind of reservoir of tools that you can use, but you might not necessarily use all of them. But for example, we, we did work with um, kind of like how to conduct an interview or how to do a survey. And because, you know, RISD and CSS is just a year and a half, you're not going to be able to do the kind of really sustained anthropological kind of work, you know, that is that goes into maybe like a field study that would require decades to really embed yourself with the community. Um, we want to get you out the door, you know, faster than maybe 10 or so years. But to that end, you can kind of we really emphasize the ethics of research and how, you know, you can frame questions, how you can go about answering those questions in ways that are um, really innovative and exciting, but also are kind of, you know, um, rigorous and, and really uh, uh, pursuing new avenues of inquiry. Um, we have a, a question specifically for you, Sierra, from Lauren, um, who thanks you for sharing your experience in the program. But um, uh, Lauren would like to know, could you share more about what drew you to pursuing the NCSS MA at RISD? Yeah, so for me, I'll just say that my own undergraduate background was in English literature. I saw that there were multiple professors affiliated with NCSS who have backgrounds in literary studies. So for me, I saw this program as a way to combine my past research in literary studies with other interests, including photography, um, environmental studies. Um, it 
really was a place for me to tie a lot of what I wanted to pursue together with the goal of getting a job after this. So I think our interest in my cohort really varies about what we want to do after the program. But for me, I'm looking for a way to tie together my interests with the goal of going into either journalism or working for a public archive facility or working for a historical society or even any publication that aligns with my interests regarding energy justice, land use. So it's been, you know, it's been good just to have all of these opportunities at RISD. It is so possible to tailor your own experience, but it takes a lot of, you know, inward reflection at the same time. Yeah, I think like like any grad program, um, NCSS uh, really, I think, demands a lot of this uh, self uh, kind of motivation and independent work, uh, both within research and, and to really make it whatever uh, you hope it, 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 it will be for you. Um, that's kind of the great thing about NCSS is that it is so open-ended that it can be whatever you want it to be. Um, and so we, we invite you to, to really push that and to, and to make it what it can be for you. Lena is asking in terms of quantitative research methods, what software research programs do students use, such as SPSS, uh, Stata, Excel, et cetera? And I think with respect to that, um, for quantitative research, we don't really have a lot of students who are working on that in particular. Um, we had one student, and please forgive because it's, um, it's been a, a, a while, and so I don't remember the exact program, but we had a student, Casey Merkel, actually, um, who did the work uh, on the thesis with the Blackstone Watershed, who was very interested in um, uh, transcription and kind of content analysis of, uh, of oral histories and transcriptions about the Blackstone um, River. And so um, I know that she was able to use um, some software. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the name of it offhand, um, but I will say that um, with respect to research, um, the, the thus far, and I hope to be challenged, you know, with an incoming cohort, but thus far, um, the students have really geared much more towards um, qualitative research and uh, kind of things like visual analysis or content analysis or, you know, looking at rhetoric and close reading. Um, and so I, I, I hope we can continue to push a little bit further and I encourage um, you know prospective applicants to, to do that pushing and to really kind of um, I'm a big advocate um, both you know in my own research and for the program of getting out of your comfort zone and I can, can say you know with with really good authority RISD is definitely the place to go out of your comfort zone. I want to hop in there too and say that a couple of people in my cohort were able to take classes on GIS, Geographic Information System. So there is a little bit of that, some crossover between the architecture, landscape architecture departments. It's there, it's possible to seek out and make connections with professors and other departments. And there are a lot of software programs that could be accessible if you know who to ask. That's awesome. Great, I think that's a, sec a great segue to end this session. If you um, think of anything after this, feel free to send us an email. Um, you can send it to admissions at RISD.edu and I can direct it to Sean. Um, and uh, with that, I just wanna thank you. I wanna thank Sean and Sierra for um, doing this amazing, very thorough presentation. It is recorded, it was a lot of information. We'll be posting all of these recordings from Open House onto our YouTube channel. Um, we'll be sending an email to everybody. Um, so you'll get that. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, especially to Sierra for being here. Um, it's really wonderful to be here virtually with you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to direct them um, our way. Uh, we, hope to, we hope to see your application and we hope to see you next fall. Thank you very much and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.